Jake, that was a destructive finish with the body shot. First of all, did you see that coming a mile away with him being open to the body? And obviously, the obvious comparison with it being Makayev's last opponent, you finished him quicker than Makayev did as well. Leaves an opening for that fight if you, you want to pursue that. Yeah, well, um, you know, in preparation, I saw that he, he rushes in. So... It's like a timing shot as a guy closes the distance, boom, the uppercut's right there. And also it acts as like a takedown defense as well because if he happens to shoot at that time instead, I can use it as an underhook. But, you know, I don't want to give too much away and give fighters free advice. You know, you've got to pay me for a PT. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, I finished him quicker than Makaev finished him. Uh, it was life or death work for Makaev, so... Um, you know, he can say what he wants, but, you know, I think Nascimento would absolutely destroy Makev, finish him in the first round. Um, I've, I've learned a lot since that fight. I've grown, I've got better. Makev's been turning the fight down for about seven, eight years, so, but instead he wants to fight me in the back, in the streets and stuff like an idiot. Uh, you know what I mean? But, Hopefully that that fight can happen one day, but probably not. But hopefully I can get a top 15 opponent next or crack the top 15 rankings. And what was that experience like fighting in the O2 on probably the biggest card in UK MMA history as well, just drawing from that crowd? Yeah, man, I felt like a, a modern-day gladiator coming out and all the people are there, thinking in my mind, they're all there for me. Um, I felt like a modern-day gladiator, bloodthirsty. I was bloodthirsty, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want to be too graphic, but like, fighting gets me going. Yeah. Well done on the victory. Jake. Jake, how you doing, mate? All right. Um, first of all, congratulations on your win, mate. Um, so how did it feel coming out today, knowing that you're one of your teammates is the welterweight champion, he's headlining the card? Did you sort of feel like his army behind him sort of thing now? Did it give you, did it give you any more sort of motivation today? Yeah, man, of course it gives me motivation, obviously, to see Leon as the champion. I mean, I've always dreamed and always thought, you know, I'm going to be champion one day, but to see a friend and a, a fellow training partner and even one, at one stage he was my coach earlier on in my career and he's the champion, so it's like um, it makes the dreams even more believable and, um, you know, it helps push the MMA, especially here in Birmingham, you know what I mean? Uh, there's been a lot of pioneers um, of Birmingham MMA, and Leon's definitely one of them, and also my coach, who was in my corner, Vaughan Lee, pioneer of Birmingham MMA. So, yeah, we're helping it grow and helping the kids um, in the area, because Birmingham's known for being rough, you know what I mean, rough and tough, um, you know, and it's giving the people another avenue, you know, getting off the streets and, yeah. Yeah, well, as you know, I match fights. You sent me some fighters to match for you before, <laughs> and... Um, so how important do you feel it is to give back to your community, you know, to show, like, you know where you've come from, you know what it was like in the streets of Birmingham, you know, and does it feel like almost self-rewarding and really important that someone like you is doing that? Yeah, definitely um, feels rewarding, you know. Um, you know, obviously I've got a few fighters in the gym and, and um, you know, they're looking up to me and, and, and feeling like one day they can get there and that. And as long as you work hard and, and listen, you'll get there, you know. And one more thing for me, um, you lived up to your name, your nickname with that finish. Those arms were coming down like King Kong, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> the way you were throwing them hammer fists, you looked like just an angry silverback, man. <laughs> yeah, well, th that, that's why they call me White Kong, isn't it? Like, I don't know, it just come out, <laughs> just come out of me then. <laughs> uh, congratulations, man. Thank you. Yeah, Jake, right here. Uh, I have to get your reaction to when he came in overweight. Like, this missing weight, but the missing weight by that much is, is much different. Yeah, I mean, three and a half pounds is a lot, especially at a flyweight level. Um, you know, obviously, percentage-wise, it's a lot more than a welterweight or whatever. Percentage-wise, he's, he's missed it by quite a lot. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, I took 30% of his purse, but, you know, it's not a lot when you miss the weight by that much. I do think it was a strategic move. The last two opponents have missed weight by quite a bit. I think it was strategic because he wants to come in a bigger man and try and hold me on the floor and, 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 and stuff like that. That's why I thought it was a strategic um, weight miss. 
Um, but if anything, I come in the cage and I was bigger than him. I'm a big flyweight. I cut a lot of weight. So, um, you know, they could keep trying, but they're going to keep getting banged. When you, bring, when you say strategic, uh, is that what was going through your mind? Because normally when you miss weight by that much, you're usually one of the last few fighters to weigh in because you're trying to use as much time. But he was one second or third fighter on the... He weighed in before you and he still came in overweight. Yeah, well, the, um, I got, like, a call at, like, at, uh, like, half nine on the night saying that he quit cutting weight at 8 p.m. So, <laughs> I was like, mate, fuck, I've already done half the weight, you know what I mean? Like, uh, um, <laughs> it was one of them ones, um, I don't know what to say about it. So, if he did have a bad weight cut, like, you, you believe, uh, do you think that body shot would have played a bigger factor in, like, because... Punching him in the stomach like that on that bad weight cut has to be a big issue. Yeah, but that would have hurt him regardless. He don't, he don't, did, these MMA fighters don't see these shots coming. They don't train like that. You watch a lot of MMA fights, UFC, anything, and they never throw a body shot, it's only body kicks. So and I'm, I've got a well versed variety to my striking game with head and body shots. This, this ain't my first body shot KO as a professional. I've, I've body shot KO'd people before. I've sparred British champions in boxing and dropped them with body shots. So, you know, I'm very, it's, you know, it's part of my game, but, yeah. Jake. Um, so, obviously, third performance in the UFC now. Um, a lot of us who have seen you fight before you came to the UFC, and then we saw your first performance, a lot of us thought, nah, that's not the real Jake Hadley. So obviously you've given us two really good performances since then. Since then, how great does it feel that you've able, been able to showcase your skills now? Yeah, it feels great. I mean, my last fight was, um, you know, uh, a back and forth striking display, very entertaining, and then I and then I finished him and choked him out on the ground. I thought I was going to get the bonus for that fight. I'm hoping I get the bonus for this one because I finished him rapid. He missed weight by three and a half pounds. I should have got the bonus the last fight, so I feel like I deserve it this time. And, you know, um, I deserve it. And just, we were talking about the weight cut there. Was there a part of you, yes, a uh, few days ago when you heard that he, was, he missed weight, that there might be a small chance that Mokhaev's opponent might miss weight too, and then magically you get to face each other on, on this card? Yeah, well, I was slightly hoping that, but when um, I saw Mark Ebb's opponent, he ain't the biggest flyweight. I thought, oh, he, he's definitely going to be making the weight and that. But, you know, he's a nice chap. I hope he, be, hope he beats Mark Ebb. He's a very nice guy. I had, I had my photo with him, actually. Um, he said he was a fan of mine. I'm now a fan of his, so I hope he wins. And if there is another card that people are talking about in July, would you like to fight on that one? Um, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Congratulations. Thank you. One more. Uh, I know, obviously, you, you have your home base here and everything, but would you be happy to go fight in Las Vegas on these massive cards? Like, Mahayev wants to fight on that international fight week card in July. Yeah, man, I love, um, I love fighting in Vegas. I fought three times already in Vegas. So, you know, uh, you know a date for me, August or September, if there's any, anything around there in Vegas. I don't know if there is or isn't, but... Yeah, I mean, I'll fight anywhere. I mean, I'll fight in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. There's a, they had a voodoo doll that looked exactly like me and was poking it with sticks and shit. And, and um, people was saying that it was going to kill me and stuff. So I'll fight anywhere. I'll fight in, you know, people's backyards. I don't care. I'm a, I'm a warrior. I, I don't give a crap. Sorry, just uh, one more from me, Jake. Um, I remember you telling me that there was a lot of people in school that, you know, even, even used to bully you, said you couldn't make it, you would never be where you are today. So I want to give you the opportunity to say something to those people who doubted you. I ain't got nothing to say to them, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, it's like um, an unachievable goal, isn't it, really? Like, uh, how many people as a kid said to their parents or whatever, I want to be a footballer when I grow up, Dad, or... I want to be a, I want to go to space or something. How many people follow their dreams and follow their goals and that? You know what I mean? N not, not very many. So I'm not shocked that a lot of people said that to me growing up. And, um, but I've proved everyone wrong. 
hard work. No one, from, no one from my area has ever made it to the UFC or anywhere. No, no one. You know, I'm the first ever UFC fighter from Albury. I'm the first ever Cage Warriors World Champion from Albury. I'm the first ever EFC World Champion from Albury, and I'll be the first ever UFC World Champion in Albury. But I need a, I need a statue of my likeness in Albury Town Centre. You know what I mean? Or at least a spray painting somewhere. You know what I mean? I need something like that. 